so for your term one examinations for cbsc class 10 we would be starting with geography uh, the very first chapter and that is resources and development now uh, all of the mcqs for class 10 are available at the following link so we have uh, more than 700 questions where you would have detailed explanation for each of those now coming on next is understanding the questions that can come from resource and development in geography now understand 40% of the questions would be very very easy when it comes to mcq around 30% questions would be um, medium and around 20 to 30% would be relatively difficult to answer when i say difficult it's not actually difficult but applicative and conceptual in nature so let's understand from this chapter first of all we need to understand what are the interrelations that exist so what are the three things between which the interrelations would be there so the answer would be physical environment institutions and technology so interrelationship of these three would result in a kind of um, resource development now resource and the classification so it can be either natural or human so under natural it's renewable and non renewable so what can be a kind of question you can simply be asked uh, which of the following example is an example of renewable there can be oil gas water there can be various uh, things that can be mentioned and you can be asked whether it is a renewable or a non renewable resource then there can be a question on whether it is a continuous resource or a by biological resource biological resource includes forest and wildlife so there are four bases on which we divide first is biotic abiotic biotic means living renewable non renewable individual community national and international potential developed stock and reserve now these are the four classifications that are given for example if it is given rock or metal we know it is abiotic so each of the category examples you have to remember and from the example let's say fishery we know it is biotic it's living similarly uh, when it comes to the political boundaries the ocean area we say it is national resource because up to 12 nautical miles it is considered as a national region so uh, the territorial waters and therefore we call this as national resource however if we talk about exclusive economic zone beyond 200 nautical mile uh, of the exclusive economic zone we say it is the open waters and this is the international resource so we classify various resources under different head and there can be a simple uh, explanation that is given and you can be asked which Which category it belongs to? Okay, so uh, community owned, which is owned by the community. For example, grazing grounds, burial grounds are examples of community owned. Then we have developed resources, the resources which are surveyed and their quality is assessed. Potential, where we say. they can be utilized in future right now they are not utilized but in future there is a potential to use them rajasthan gujarat has for example a lot of wind and solar energy potentials so they can be utilized in future similarly stock what we have what satisfies the human need is the stock and reserve is uh, that can be used for future requirement so we call this as reserve for example water in the dam is an example of reserve so those are the categories that we understand here now this whole chapter we have covered as a separate video so that video covers the uh, complete lecture the summary of the lecture but here we are talking about what could be the uh, probable mcqs so uh, our focus is from an mcq orientation for term 1 now what is sustainable development the definition is given here when we talk about development not only for the present generation but also for the future generation we say it is sustainable in nature and the definition it self can come in the various choices and you can be asked which is the right definition for sustainable development then rio de janeiro summit took place in which year uh, rio de janeiro is located where so those are some of the common questions and under this we adopted which agenda we call it agenda 21 why 21 because it is sustainable development in 21st century and this was uh, taken in by the un conference for environment and development so those are the kind of questions related to it the next is questions related to resource planning now under resource planning we understand what kind of regions are rich in what so for example jharkhand chatisgarh madhya pradesh rich in minerals and coal arunachal pradesh has lot of water but does not does not have infrastructure rajasthan has huge amount of solar and wind potentials but no water so we identify the regions 
what they are good at what they are what they lack and based on that we understand uh, what kind of planning should take place so these are the regions and why they are abundant in what things they are abundant and what things they are deficit could be the common questions we can ask then resource planning in india the three stages first is identifying an inventory then is evolving a planning structure and then matching the resource development so these three uh, levels are asked and therefore important the next is coming on to conservation conservation of resources so what are the approaches that have been taken now with gandhi's words there is enough for everybody's need not for anybody's greed now who said these lines that can be one of the questions so mahatma gandhi said this then club of rome what is it when it was established similarly who wrote the book small is beautiful by shumaker in 1974 and this is based on the gandhian philosophy then we have the book our common future when was it released and its contribution has been important as at the rio de janeiro summit the next is land resources under different heads we say land resources so under land resource what are the utilization so five different classifications you can be asked which of the following is not part of land utilization classification so forests are land not available for cultivation can be further divided into barren and non agriculture then uncultivated areas as permanent pastures miscellaneous tree crops and culturable wasteland fallow land is current fallow and other than current fallow and then net zone area net zone area is the area zone more than once in an agricultural area plus the net zone would be called as the crops crop crossed crossed area so uh, gross cropped area now uh, gross crop is the net zone area plus the area zone more than once and we call it as gross cropped area so the definition of what is gross cropped area what is net zone area what are fallow lands what are the two classifications under fallow land and how much percentage of the land actually is dedicated to what so in india we have nearly 43% of the plains 30% mountains and 27% plateau area so that's again one of the common mcq questions that can come then your reporting of the land use classification in comparison to 60s classification and 2014 classification uh, the highest category which is uh, the net zone area has slightly decreased okay and then we have the forest cover which has increased significantly from 18% to 23% so the comparison of two pie diagrams are important similarly we need to understand the patterns of net zone area and the regions where high proportions of uh, uh, the net zone area is seen and the variation between regions so where it is more than 80% which states it is less than 10%, 10%. again this section becomes important for your term one examination the desired percentage of forest cover again a very basic question important question and this was given under national forest policy which policy so now we have the revised policy but this was laid down in 1952 the first policy uh, and therefore is important then we talk about land degradation so over the years we have seen mining uh, and various deforestation activities due to mining in which of the states overgrazing has been seen in which states then irrigation over irrigation in which of the states so there are various reasons for which land degradation has taken place in different uh, states different reasons have been attributed to the same and this is the list which can be asked so this is the state where we have seen overgrazing where we have seen over irrigation where we have seen more uh, utilization and so on then soil as a resource so under soil as a resource this diagram is highly important not only for your term 1 examination uh, mcq purpose but also in general this is a very basic diagram that you must remember top soil has the human humus content and is the most fertile layer of the soil okay coming on next is the classification again very very important question so alluvial soil where uh, all the classifications where they are found which uh, crops grow best on these and what are the kind of uh, basic material that is seen so for example in black salt it is mainly the basalt region of the lava flow and the region where it is found okay the climatic conditions associated to the same is again 
important then uh, in the alluvial we have two classifications the khadar and the bhagar soil uh, bhagar soil is the old soil khadar is the new soil bhagar has higher concentration of nodules which we call as kankar nodules however khadar is more fertile and has finer particles so again what are the characteristics of khadar and bhagar are important and a common question and then the soils are commonly seen in the regions of dor choy and tarai area then black soil what are they rich in calcium carbonate magnesium potash so those are again important question this diagram this map itself is highly important which area which kind of soil is seen so you must remember this map and then we have uh, further other soils which are seen so red and yellow soil again which region they are formed why they are red in color so it's due to diffusion of iron okay why they look yellow because they are occur in hydrated form so those are the common questions here then in laterite soil it is acidic so what is the ph it is usually uh, found in deep deeper areas and support evergreen and deciduous trees common vegetation in laterite soil is cashew nut uh, which is commonly seen and uh, lead laterite is seen in which of the states and then we also have Have hilly laterite, which is seen in other states. So some states it's good for tea and coffee. Other states it's good for cashew nut. So uh, that is again important. And this soil is poor in humus content. Then we have arid soil. Lower horizons have kankar. And why they have kankar? Because there is increased calcium content uh, downwards, which leads to formation of kankar, and this restricts the filtration of the water downwards. Uh, then we have the other category, which is forest soil. Uh, soil conservation and soil erosion. What are gullies? What are badlands? Uh, what is sheet erosion? So sheet erosion is the topmost layer which is flown away. And for managing it, what are the ways? So plowing uh, actually across the slope. is one of the techniques planting of trees strips of grasses uh, then we have shelter belts stabilization of sand dunes because of shelter belts is one of the important mcqs that can come so th that was about the questions here and then there is some uh, statistics which is given in the section of state of india's environment you can just briefly go through these three points the first of which is really very important and then go through the rest two points as well then some sample mcqs are already given in your textbook uh, so just as we have discussed all of these questions can be answered from uh, there itself which of the following is renewable non renewable biotic abiotic recyclable non recyclable what are the major causes for land degradation in various states so in punjab it is over uh, irrigation then we have regions where it is over grazing regions where there is deforestation which is significant and therefore we understand the uh, kind of regions that we have discovered about so uh, we talked about why different areas have different reasons in this section and those are some of the common questions which can come from this chapter so we would be covering chapter by chapter complete of your term 1 syllabus stay subscribed for many more updates and definitely if you want to practice more questions go through the kind of questions that can come uh, we have those on the door strip tutor as mentioned and diagram based questions very very important in political science case based questions are also important we'll come to those as we move towards political science so wish you very good luck for your preparation uh, stay tuned for many more updates on term 1 mcqs wish you good luck